Hi everyone, right, it's Nick Holland, Sports Car Global, with Danny Watts from Stracker Racing. Hi Danny. How are you, good? Yeah, doing well, thank you. Um, so this is continuing our series with Stracker Racing. Um, we're starting to look a bit more at preparation for specifically for the event. Um, Danny, you've obviously, you've been to Le Mans, uh, I think, seven times. Uh, five times with Nick and Johnny in the car. Um, you finished, I believe, fifth overall in 2010, is that right? Yeah, and won the LMP2 class that year. Um, and then we won the LMP1 privateers, I think, two, three years later after that. So the more's always kind of been a, I don't know, lucky is the right word, but I can say sheer hard work that goes into it, not just from the drivers, but obviously the team, the man hours that they put in, and obviously the guys on the pit will do the strategy, um, play a really important role at that event as well, um, calling the, the safe car and the strategies, and of course the weather's always changing, and um, I suppose there's nowhere worse than driving at Le Mans at 2 o'clock in the morning when it's raining, to two and half an hour, right? Absolutely, and I mean, getting those results obviously displays Strack as a team that puts in the preparation. So for you as an individual, as a driver, um, firstly, I mean, physical fitness, I, I look at you guys and, you know, you all look like jockeys and, you know, fit as fiddles. How do you keep yourself in that condition? Well, it's funny you should say that because as we speak, I've literally just turned up at a hotel in South East England and tomorrow... Saturday, I've got a 13k obstacle course stroke mud run uh, race that I always do when I I don't race at weekends, which is a little bit of a hobby, but it's also an all-over workout with endurance and cardio and core. Because um, being brutally honest, I find gym going to the gym quite boring and road running quite boring, but this is a mixture of the two, but in a fun and competitive way, and you're timed as well, so you know where you finish at the end of it. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing tomorrow to apply a part of my preparation before the big race. Okay, and talking with uh, Nick Bailey, he mentioned Stuart Wilde of uh, Formula Fitness, works with Johnny and Nick. Yeah, we've done a lot with Stu in the past. He's been part of the group for a number of years, and even before that, um, I used him when I was doing A1GP uh, for Great Britain in Malaysia, where it was boiling hot. Um, and he's good in that department. He's also good with looking after your what you eat and what you drink during the course of the the race, and specifically Le Mans. And he's the our call of duty, if you like, when it comes to waking us up in the middle of the night when it's an hour before us, been so we can prepare and get ready for driving the car. And that's his forte, really. And he's excellent in that department. Excellent. Yeah, I understand. Stu goes back to. Um working with Jensen Button years ago and myself as almost a senior citizen I, I obviously respect that sort of effort um, from afar <laughs> Yeah well Le Mans a particular race where um, unlike the six hour races uh, he, I suppose he's not utilised as much he's one of those people that you kind of use as and when you need it if you start to feel ill he's got the right medicines and with all that's going on um, with the water and everything, he has to be careful what he gives us. But it's more important that an uh, event like the Moor, where it's such a long week, you get there a week before for the scrutineering, and you can kind of, as I think you touched on it earlier, your sort of personal preparation before the event, as in it's important to get a lot of sleep and what you eat and drink is very important, and rest, I mean, that's the key word really for the Moor. Um, because once you get into Saturday morning, what people don't realise, on the Friday night we have the, um, we're in the town centre doing the parade, and that can end up sometimes after eating being quite a late night, and then you've got on the big gassy circuit where we stay, uh, Johnny and I share a motorhome, there's always big parties and barbecues and a disco, and it's really loud and it's actually really difficult to get some sleep, and then you're up at 7am Saturday morning ready for the warm-up, um, and then basically, as you finish the race, you're up until probably, you know, Sunday evening. Yeah. Um, so it's a long, long, brutal event um, for your, not only your body, but actually probably more so mentally uh, demanding, I'd say, personally, from my perspective, it really 
really drained you mentally. Yeah, I was going to come on to sort of um, the mental side of things. I mean, rest, obviously, is the more you can put into the bank beforehand, um, hopefully, the more you've got to, to draw upon. Um, Nick had also mentioned to me you do some training sort of visually as well. Um, I think Nick is quite into the visual stuff. Personally, I don't get too much out of that stuff, really. I just kind of one of those get in and do it type thing. Right. Um, and I don't really do too much of that or the focusing stuff. It's just like get your helmet on in the car and drive it, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've always been like that. Um, uh, Sleep-wise, before the event, uh, I've been flat out coaching the different people in different classes, and I'm off to Budapest for the Hungarian for two days coaching out there. So I'll just, it's a normal kind of week working for me, because <laughs> yeah. when I don't race, I teach people in different categories and different cars and different formulas and different ages uh, in racing cars. So oh, I just try and get as much as I can, but really and truly, it's just crack on with it, really. Um, yeah. And it's kind of just another race, and to be honest, once you're in the car, you've got the adrenaline flowing anyway, and that, that alone keeps you awake, believe me. And also, I can't sleep during the race at all. I know some people can and they try, but I tend to just have the radio on, listen to what the Johnny and Nick are saying when they're driving, watch the live time and screens, um, get a bite to eat, make sure I take on loads of fluids, and then it's normally, it comes around quite quickly when it's your turn to get back in the car, so just keep going, you know? That's interesting. I've always wondered, you know, between stints, what uh, what you could possibly get up to. So, yeah, I guess it, it's it's kind of trying to change over as if you've you've had one race, now you're having a bit of a gap, and then you're effectively you're going out again. It seems to come around really quick, and from the moment you get out, I mean, my schedule in between stints is to get out of my. Uh, dirty race suit if you like and underwear change well have a shower change into some fresh uh, race gear then go and get something to eat then go back to the motor home lie down watch the live time and listen to the radio and pretty much by the time you've done that for 20 minutes half an hour you're called upon to go back up to the garage and be ready and waiting in case uh, the other driver's called in early if there's a safety car or whatever situation or you know if someone's got a leg ache or any kind of problems, you have to be up there ready. So the, your time off seems very, very short. But when you're driving in the car, it seems to drag on, especially the kind of quadruple stints, which I guess for most things, really, that's the norm. Yeah. Um, I mean, a, a real test of endurance, isn't it? The, in terms of in the car, do you actually position yourself differently? I mean, you've driven in the same crew for quite some time. Are you all... A, a similar size, got a, a comfortable position? Well, we've been together now as a, a threesome with Stracker for, well, I think I've been there eight years, I think Johnny's seven, so between us we know each other uh, well enough to know what makes us all tick in terms of driving, in terms of what we need out of the car, when to you know, put an arm around each other, when to punch each other in the arm when we need a bit of a kick, you know? Um, <laughs> So from that respect, we know each other really, really well. That continuity is so important. Um, uh, but separate to that, um, in terms of setting up the car, we can trust each other from that point of view. If Johnny says, yep, the car's really good, or it's got a little bit of bumps or a little bit of road to you know when you get a car, that's what you're getting. And also we share everything, of course. If there's any changes, like any brake bias changes during the race, uh, or any other settings to do with the car, traction control, then it's all shared and it's all open, it's on the table and there's, I suppose there's no egos in our team, we're all mature enough and old enough now and been around the block long enough to know that we're all there to help each other and the more is one event where your teammate has to be your best friend, you know, they can't be, you can't be hiding anything from anyone, it's all, you need them as much as what they need you, so... Uh, it's a key event where everybody within a team, as a unit, you all need each other full stop. There's no individuals that are going to win them all, that is for certain. Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, it's soon going to be upon us. I mean, we've got uh, 
what another week until test day um, and you're back in the lovely familiar Gibson um, I'm hoping to uh, see the open top cars you know through to the finishing flag so good luck with it and good luck with your 13k tomorrow thanks ever so much thanks for your time Tim. all right Danny cheers thanks a lot